Jared Batten, the party's new leader, believes the government's failure to deliver on Brexit will give UKIP a boost in the polls. But new candidates have left the leader with questions to answer. One, Carl Benjamin. A worthless white English trash. I want to ask you, why did you decide to choose rape when talking about Jess Phillips? You fat, lazy, keyboard warrior. Fucking A! I don't see myself as like the ideal candidate, uh, which I'm sure you can tell by my internet history. Talk us through that thought process. Why rape? It's a joke at your expense. Alrighty cats, where are you going with that milkshake? Swindon? Hello there everyone and welcome to episode 62 of The Descent of Man. Sphere. The series where I take you through the ways in which the Manosphere and its utterly disgusting, reprehensible douchebag inhabitants are trying to reverse human evolution and drag us all back into the fucking sea. And today we're going to be taking a look at how the ego of an idiot destroyed a British political party. Yeah, that's what's happening. As we take a look at the political candidacy of Carl Benjamin. Now Carl, better known as Sargon of Akkad here on the YouTubes, and I've already covered his channel in this series. I'll leave a link to that episode in the description if you want to go and check that out. Well, Carl ran as a candidate to become a member of the European Parliament for the South West region, here in the good old United Blighty Kingdom of Britbongland. And to say that it was a fucking catastrophe from start to finish would be a perfectly accurate description of reality, which I'm sure would annoy Carl, as he and reality don't mix very well. Or indeed very often. And anyone could see that this campaign was going to be an absolute fucking shit show because A. Everything Carl touches turns to shit. That meme of him being the Grim Reaper going from door to door destroying things is absolutely accurate. And B. Because Carl's ego is fucking ludicrous. I mean this whole thing started because Carl's massive man baby ego couldn't take having the piss ripped out of him because of this awful, atrocious, disgraceful suit that he wore when he visited the European Parliament. You see, Carl wants to be taken seriously, and mocking this fucking abomination of a garment was just too much to handle, so he decided to up the stakes and run for office. And things did not start out promisingly, with one of the worst displays of stupidity, arrogance and lying ever seen at a political campaign launch. Our intrepid douchebag appeared alongside the UKIP leader Gerard Batten and a homeless Scottish hipster who apparently just seemed to wander in off the streets or something, but they let him stand there with them anyway, which is nice I suppose, and Carl proceeded to act like a monumental prick. He lambasted the media for making shit up, which is true to a certain extent, but in that regard he doesn't have a fucking leg to stand on. And as if to underline that, he went on to lie for the millionth time about Labour MP Jess Phillips. And it is at this point that I have to play this. Yes, it's the inevitable bit about rape, because this entire episode is basically going to be one big inevitable bit about rape section, because his entire campaign was about rape, or more specifically, about a tweet that he sent to Jess Phillips in 2016, stating that he wouldn't even rape her, implying that there are people out there he deems worthy of rape, who he would rape as some sort of weird fucking sexually violent compliment or something. What a fucking animal he is. But anyways, at the dumpster fire campaign launch slash press conference clusterfuck, Carl was asked about that subject, which by the way was an occurrence that Carl and his fellow UKIP members would become all too familiar with in the following weeks, as can be seen here, where Gerard Batten, the leader of UKIP, just got up and left. We, to keep he has him made as a an Ill, Ill considered remark. And if you were going to stop people taking part in public life or anything else because of some stupid, ill considered remark of several years before, then I don't think you'd have anybody in Parliament or anywhere else in public life. That kind of comment, though, has prompted some How concerns. How many times are you going to ask me the voters? same question? How many times are you going to ask me the same question? Thank you very much. <laughs> Carl. You've made life miserable for everyone else involved with UKIP, and I'm so here for it. Anyways, like I said, at the dumpster fire, campaign launch, press conference, fucking shitstorm, uh, Carl was asked this question and gave this ridiculous response. So I would like to ask Carl Benjamin why you think it is acceptable to say on Twitter that you wouldn't even rape a female Labour MP. Because I don't think women are any different to men in the way that we should treat them. Unlike the establishment, unlike our judges, who literally say, if you were a man, I would have sent you to jail, I think we should treat women the same as men. And that means if a woman is being a giant and laughing at male suicide, I'm going to be a giant 
Back to her. Any questions? So it's acceptable. Yes. It is acceptable to, to go about raping a woman. One hundred percent. Deal with it. Now, firstly, Carl, I know you're full of like massive galactic brained ideas but when you're trying to defend yourself against allegations of being a misogynist prick maybe don't lead off with calling a woman a bitch just saying and secondly your claim there about jess phillips laughing at male suicide is just a fucking lie an outright lie and i know that it's a lie rather than a mistake because i have told you on at least three separate fucking occasions that that narrative that you were spinning about her laughing at male suicide is untrue what actually happened at that parliamentary committee was this and note that she laughs way before male suicide or indeed any other issue is mentioned. Um, because of course not only do, um, do we have International Women's Day, we also have women and equality questions every month in the chamber which we don't have for men. So the opportunity for men to raise issues that are important to them is very limited. And just to give you a flavour, Mr Chairman, of the type of things that may, may come up and which will be part of International Men's Day, I'm, I'm not entirely sure why it's so humorous, but to discuss issues such as men's shorter life expectancy, uh, wider male uh, health issues, many of which go uh, unreported be through embarrassment of, of men to sort of go along and talk about these things, uh, the high uh, suicide rate amongst men, the you have to excuse me for laughing that the idea that men don't have the opportunity to ask questions in this place is a frankly laughable thing as I say as this as the only woman on this committee it seems like every day to me is Well, I wasn't, I wasn't making... With Men's day. I wasn't. You see, Carl, she didn't laugh at male suicide, okay? She laughed at the concept that she, as the sole woman representative on a parliamentary committee of ten, is being told that men don't have enough of an opportunity to speak in Parliament, because that's obviously, palpably, nonsense. Now, even though Carl blatantly lied at that press conference, and by the way, it's hilarious to me that Carl thought that it was okay to bring, like, YouTube rules into the real world, Carl, you can't just get away with the usual fucking shit you pull where you just make up any old fucking bollocks and then just move on without proving it or anything, substantiating your claims whatsoever, and hoping that no one will check. Because in the real world, they do check. And they did, and they found the clip I just played very, very fucking easily and proved you wrong. Like I said, you're a fucking moron. Anyways, right, also at that press conference slash campaign launch thing, a meme was born when Carl described the press like this. Well, look, I'm not answering your questions. I'm not apologising for anything. You dirty, dirty smear merchants. Get back. <laughs> and unsurprisingly, given that it was Carl and his fanboys that took that meme up, uh, it got old really fucking fast. Dirty, dirty smear merchants. The dirty smear merchants. You guys are dirty, dirty smear merchants. Dirty, dirty smear campaign. The scourge of the dirty, dirty smear merchants. <laughs> Yeah, that got really tedious really rather fucking quickly. Which is unsurprising given that every meme Carl ever touches, even the ones he creates, he drives into the fucking ground. He kills it stone dead almost instantly. He sucks the life out of everything. But that doesn't stop him from then continuing to flog that dead horse long after it is shuffled off this mortal coil. But anyways, yeah, in terms of the YouTube rules not transferring into the real world and Carl really not understanding that disconnect, it didn't just stop at journalists fact-checking him. Because there were also legal issues for him to have to deal with, because having obviously provably slandered Jess Phillips, she contacted her lawyers about it. And suddenly, as if miraculously, Carl had changed his story, when he went on the Victoria Derbyshire show a couple of days later. It's almost as if a cease and desist letter threatening legal action was sent to him or something. Who knows? But anyways, yeah, like I say, Carl changed his story to this equally incorrect pile of donkey smegma. Later she says, you'll have to excuse me for laughing, but the idea that men don't have the opportunity to ask questions in this place is frankly a laughable thing. As the only woman on this committee, it seems like every day is International Men's Day. Yeah, but that's her feminist bias. She blocked it. That's why it wasn't talked about. So her saying, well, he's a man, he can talk about it in any way he wants. 
Not if she's blocking it. You see, Carla then changed the story to being that Jess Phillips had blocked the debate from ever happening, which is wrong for two main reasons. Firstly, she is one member of a ten-member committee, and she wasn't even the chair or vice chair of that committee. She just had one vote. She couldn't block it on her own. And secondly, the debate wasn't blocked. The debate happened, as you can see here from the Hansard record of it. Hansard, by the way, being the official organisation which chronicles and records all debates that happen in the British Parliament. And I'll leave a link to all relevant information in the description box. So as you can see here, the Male Suicide and International Men's Day debate took place in Westminster Hall on the 19th of November 2015, called by Philip Davis MP. So yeah, Jess Phillips didn't block shit. You lying bastard. And by the way, Westminster Hall is where most backbench debates happen because the problem with having backbench debates in the main chamber of the House of Commons is that it's one room. So, you know, it's very time limited. And it was this whole thing that they were discussing in that original committee meeting, you fucking idiot. But anyways, back to the Victoria Derbyshire interview where you said this particularly ignorant shit. She blocked it. That's why it wasn't talked about. So her saying, well, he's a man, he can talk about it in any way he wants. Not if she's blocking it. And her demand on him, she wants 50% representation in Parliament. That's an unreasonable demand. Philip Davies doesn't get to choose that. So when do we have the debate on male suicide? It's the number one killer of men under 45. My uncle committed suicide. When do we get to have that debate? Thank you very much for talking to Never. us today. That's the point. You see, Carl, this is where you're pretending to care about male suicide runs into the brick wall of reality that is your own fucking ignorance of politics and your general laziness. Because if you had taken just a moment to do a very quick Hansard search, you would have found that the last debate specifically about male suicide, so not suicide in general or mental health problems in general, which obviously encompasses male suicide, but specifically male suicide on its own, was called in December of 2017, and interestingly called by a Labour MP and feminist, Jed Killen. And that the last question asked in Parliament about male suicide was asked by a different Labour MP and feminist, Conor McGinn. So not only do these topics get discussed in Parliament, which you said they never did because you're a fucking moron, a fucking ignoramus of the highest order, but also, Carl, please do tell me again who it is that's actually trying to make positive progress on men's issues, because it certainly isn't Philip Davis and his MRA acolytes who like to spend most of their time trying to, you know, block upskirting bills and stuff. Yeah, this fucking happened. I'll leave a link to that story below. Fuck Philip Davis, fuck Christopher Chope. And yeah, it seems very much that it's left-wing MPs and feminists who are trying to make actual positive progress on men's issues. Hmm, that's interesting, isn't it, Carl? But anyways, back to the Victoria Derbyshire interview, because there were some absolute gems in there. He claimed that the rape joke, quote-unquote, he aimed at Jess Phillips was a meta-joke. And that is a fucking genuine quote. I shit you not. But you chose rape, and I'm really interested to find out why. It's honestly part of a long meta joke. He really has disappeared so far up his own arse, it's unbelievable. And he also said that the joke, quote unquote, was at Victoria Derbyshire's expense. Again, not a good look, Carl. Not a good look. He also went on to claim that there were two sides of the debate on rape, and that he was on the other side of the debate to Victoria Derbyshire and Jess Phillips, which insinuated that he was pro-rape, which I'm sure he didn't actually mean, but he's just too stupid and or dishonest to realise that his linguistic skills aren't really up to scratch, especially when he's talking to a proper journalist. Amazing stuff. Also, Carl, as an ignorant anti-socialist, went on to quote George Orwell unironically, because he really is a dense motherfucker. He also went on to throw the deputy leader of UKIP under the bus, because at this point, fuck it, why not, I guess, just burn the whole place to the ground. I propose that we replace the term scorched earth policy with the phrase sargoning. Like, oh my god, after the nuclear bomb was done with it, Hiroshima was totally sargoned. Anyways, yeah, Victoria Derbyshire also totally fucking beasted him about the Jess Phillips thing and his, quote, rape discourse, unquote. That was some, uh, some pretty spicy stuff. Um, there was this absolutely devastating moment where, after their discussion, Victoria read out some viewer correspondence. And I'll just play you the clip. It's brutal stuff. Thanks for your comments. Claire says, uh, this Carl Benjamin interview on your programme today has made me cry. He sounds just like my rapist. Holy shit, Carl. You sound like a rapist. <laughs> oh, oof. Sorry about that. That's, uh, there's, there's really no coming back from that, Carl. I mean, really, that's the optics equivalent of cancer and AIDS joining together to kick the shit out of you. Wow. Anyways, uh, there was also this moment right at the start of the interview, which will act as my seamless segue into the next section of the video. Why do you think you've had kippers and milkshakes thrown over you while campaigning? Milkshake and kippers? Whatever could she mean? 
Well, I think we all know what she fucking means. It's this stuff. Yes, Carl was milkshaked on a number of occasions. In fact, milkshaking was very much the summer craze of 2019 in the UK. Although it started sort of randomly with the guy that Tommy Robinson, and by the way, Tommy Robinson was standing as an independent in the northwest region. Well, Tommy chased this guy down at an event, and the guy happened to have a milkshake and was unhappy with Tommy, you know, basically fucking harassing him. So, bosh, he doused the munchkin Mussolini, and an IRL meme was born onto the world. And an honourable mention to the dude who got Farage with a milkshake Top work from that bloke. Hilarious. But Carl, however, was the most prolific of the milkshakees, getting absolutely fucking doused uh, at various places along his ridiculous journeys. It was hilarious. And in terms of kippers, well, in the Cornish town of Truro, this happened. UKIP. The Conservative Party has more racists than UKIP. So, I don't need permission to be here, do I? Excuse me. Excuse me. And whilst the live action video is a little undramatic, it did produce one of the best still image shots of the year. I mean, if this fucking masterpiece doesn't win a Pulitzer, then there's no justice in this world. No justice, I say! I mean, it's fucking mesmerising. There's just so much going on in this one image. Firstly, there's the two fucking inbreds either side of him behind the main action, and I bet the two of them combined have less of an IQ than one of the fish. And all of those fish are fucking dead. Then there's Carl's face, which looks like he's trying to navigate a particularly tricky shit after a spicy curry from the night before. Pro tip, keep your toilet roll in the fridge overnight. Then there's the pigeon hovering behind him as if to say, Carl, 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 you're going to eat them fish, pal. You want to eat them fish? I mean, there's some stale chips and cigarette butts and stuff, and I'm, I'm happy enough with them, but if there's fresh fish going, I'll fucking peck the shit out of it, son. Then there's the three fish themselves, who all bring something a little different to the picture. The one on the right-hand side of the picture, as we look at it, has already landed a devastating blow upon the Sargonian cheek. His jowl may never recover. This motherfucker was quick out of the gates. First out of the trenches and over the top, yelling, Once more into the breach, my piskeen brethren. The world will long remember the sacrifice we make here this day. And I admire that level of bravery and commitment to the cause. Well played, comrade. Well played. Then there's the one in the middle who has entirely evaded Carl's bear poor defence strategy and will soon back up his quicker brother in arms. And together they will land a one two punch, the likes of which the world has rarely seen. He screams, Death and Glory! as he slams Finn Long into the already stunned and jiggling jowl of the Swindonian dickhole. And then there's this slippery customer who is clearly writhing around the attempted block of Benjamin Zane. You think you can stop me? You think your chubby, sausage-fingered ham hands can save you from your inevitable fishy fate? Not on your fucking life, my boy. I have the blood of a million piscid ancestors coursing through my veins, and you will feel my fishy, pugilistic rage upon you this very day. You will face the full, scaly justice that you have wrought upon yourself. You bounder! You cad! You fiend! Onward, my fishy brothers! And as if that wasn't enough, he also got horse-shitted. Yep, they dumped horse crap around where he was standing at one of these events, forcing him to move from his prearranged spot. The people of the southwest clearly knew that Carl was full of shit, and responded in kind. But thankfully, Carl is such a well-balanced and thoughtful chap that he didn't make a big deal about this at all. Oh no, sorry, the exact opposite of that is true. He whined like a petty, thin-skinned little bitch at every available opportunity. They think, I mean, one of them turned up saying, oh, you know, I want you to get milkshaked on a sign or something. Well, to me, that's assault. Why did you come and attack me then? the democratic process you are undermining you don't just get to go around assaulting people talk to me. Let me i do want to, to talk to you but i also don't want to be under threat of communist agitators attacking me and yet i'm the one who has been assaulted sir because you've been lying about me and i've been attacked in the street because of your lies did someone say victim playing man baby douchebag yeah i said that to describe carl's victim playing man baby ish douchebaggery so um yeah Now, everything I've taken you through so far only encompasses the first couple of weeks of the fucking campaign. I mean, I haven't even gotten onto any of the policies that Carl was proposing at the election, and that's mainly because he didn't have any fucking policies. After challenging Mr. Benjamin on his comments, I asked him about the substance of his campaign. OK, so give me your top five policy offers. What's your, what's your top five on the doorstep? Well, actual policies. I mean, what, what can an MEP even propose? Oh, for fuck's sake, Carl, you stupid bastard. Right, you complained constantly about the media just going on about you being the rape tweet guy. And can we just, for a second, 
just savour the beautiful deliciousness that is the fact that he is now referred to as the rape tweet guy. That's what he's known as now, and that is fucking glorious. Anyways, right, Carl, you constantly moaned about people just going on about the rape tweet, and you wanted to talk about the issues. And then when given an opportunity on a major platform, and by the way, that Sky News interview wasn't the only place where he couldn't come up with a fucking set of policies or any policies whatsoever. Anyways, Carl, when you were given that platform and given an opportunity to, to put forward your policies and your ideas and stuff, what did you do? Fuck all. You couldn't come up with any policies whatsoever, you fucking dullard. I mean, you couldn't even garble together some fucking bullshit about Article 13, which, if you remember, was the whole reason you went to the European Parliament in that abomination of a suit in the first place, right? You couldn't even come up with that as some sort of a policy. I mean, you're just too fucking stupid for words. You really are. But anyways, there were various other highlights from the campaign, and I'm just going to blow through them because they were so numerous that I just I really don't have the time to take them on, you know, in any great detail. Carl made the whole rape tweet thing even worse by destroying the only defence he had, which was an awful defence, but, you know, the only defence he'd ever really used, that being that he had said that he wouldn't even rape her. And he destroyed this by producing a god-awful video of supposed comedy whilst in Gibraltar. And yes, Gibraltar is a part of the South West constituency because of, you know, Britain's heritage of imperialism! But anyways, in that incredibly unfunny video, which I sure as shit ain't playing here, Carl said that he might consider raping Jess Phillips, and then added that there isn't enough beer in the world. All of which is of course disgusting beyond belief, but shows that he fundamentally misunderstands the dynamics of rape anyways. What a surprise, yet another thing that Carl doesn't understand. What a moron. And on the back of Carl doubling down on his rapey shit, he was denounced by his political hero, Nigel Farage. What do you make of UKIP, who are currently fielding a candidate, Carl Benjamin, yeah. who thinks it's funny to make yeah. jokes, supposedly, about raping Labour MP Jess Phillips? I've sat here on this couch as leader of UKIP, uh, discussing political issues. It was part of my life for 25 years. I warned them last year repeatedly, do not let the lunatic fringe, do not let the criminal fringe into the party. Peers, they ignored me. On a personal level, I feel slightly sad that it's happened, uh, but frankly, uh, the sooner this election's over with and UKIP closes down, the better it will be. It's, it's gone beyond a joke. Isn't it, it's, isn't it's it pretty disgusting it's that this vile. person is even allowed to it's, be it's, it's, putting it's, himself up? It's extraordinary. You know, these comments are vile. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Carl. When you are too cancerous for Piers Morgan and Nigel Farage, then you really, really have gone too far. Jesus fucking Christ. But anyways, speaking of UKIP defectors, there were lots and lots of resignations from UKIP, including a fellow MEP candidate. And even the chairman of UKIP Swindon resigned. The chairman of Carl's own fucking UKIP branch, a man who had actually met Carl, decided that he couldn't in good conscience campaign for Carl. So he resigned. <laughs> What a fucking train wreck of a campaign. Also, the entire leadership of the Gloucestershire branch of the party resigned, which, by the way, is a part of the region Carl was standing in. And the extra beautiful detail about that particular thing was that the Gloucestershire branch didn't just resign, they closed down their website and left this note up, stating that Carl was such toxic cancer that they wanted nothing to do with him. I mean, I'm paraphrasing it, of course, but you can read it there for yourself. But anyways, as for Carl himself, he spent much of the campaign doing rip-offs of Stephen Crowder's Change My Mind events, where he would talk utter bollocks with random members of the public. I watched the majority of the ones he put out on the internet, and virtually nothing of worth or substance was said during them. It was just utterly vacuous self-aggrandising douchebaggery from Carl. What a surprise. And at one of these events, a jazz saxophonist turned up to drown him out, which was fucking hilarious. <laughs> Saxophone! Saxophone! Nah. But anyways, at these events, in order to cut down the number of milkshakings taking place, he decided to hire security guards. One of which is a Holocaust denier. I've heard people say that for the crematoria to have cremated all the people they said that were um, exterminated during the Holocaust, it would have had to carry on for five years after the war to get through the back of bodies. That was one mathematician to doubt. Another person said that had the gas chambers been used in the way that was indicated in the diagrams and by the buildings, that the chimneys were so low that it would have gassed the rest of the camp and murdered everybody that way. Um, other people say the tattoos don't go up far enough on the digits. Another people said that the doors don't seal. Another person said that 
gas trap between the bodies because apparently the bodies were always stacked up like that. Gas trap between the bodies would have killed people going in to pull the bodies out. Carl, you were giving money to and employing a Holocaust denier. I mean, it's you, you don't need to throw me a bone here. I, I can make you look like a fucking terrible piece of garbage without you, like, giving me these bits. Jesus Christ, you really are fucking scum, eh? I'm looking for a fascist and I actually can't see one. Um, Carl, he stood to your left-hand side there. Just, just, um, just saying, bro. And of course, none of that helped when eventually, inevitably, his white N-word rant, the infamous white N-words rant, uh, came to the fore. Including also um, uh, another clip from a thing he did in America where he was very, very insensitive about the Holocaust. Um, that When that clip came up as well, none of this helped, okay, Carl? It made you look like the racist piece of shit that you are. But anyways, there was also a hustings event, which, by the way, a hustings event is like a town hall event that they have in America, but where representatives of all the parties are there and they can talk and debate through the issues, or at least that's in theory how it goes. But after a boycott by the other parties at the University of Bristol hustings, Carl turned up on his own, as if to further point out how fucking hated he is. Even the other pro-Brexit parties didn't want to get this fucking stank on them. And they like Nigel Farage, for fuck's sake. But anyways, Carl just sat there all alone. How pathetic! And just as an aside, during that particular event, as if to further underline how crazy far-right this garbage bag has gone, he accused the Liberal Democrats of being communist. That being the same Liberal Democrats who were in coalition government with the Conservative Party until 2010. Yeah. He really is even more full of shit than you could possibly have thought. And during the campaign, as if things weren't bad enough for Carl, there were two separate police investigations into Carl's activities, surrounding initially the rape tweet, and then some allegations that he had tried to acquire child pornography, although those allegations seem to have been unfounded. Although given his past disgusting comments about the it depends on the child stuff, I can see why the police took those allegations with the utmost seriousness. And Carl really didn't help his case when during the campaign he called on the services of known pederasty supporter Milo Yiannopoulos. Yes, that's how fucking desperate Carl was. He called for Milo. And Milo appeared with Carl at a couple of events, and the saddest element of all of that, especially from Milo's point of view, was that at one of the events, Milo was also milkshaked, but no one cared. Literally, no one really commented on it, it didn't make the newspapers, no one gave a shit. Hilarious. And as if to sum up in a piece of absolutely beautiful symbolism how completely and totally despised Carl is, he was even banned from a fucking church. Exeter Cathedral, to be precise. I mean, that's the church, for fuck's sake. An institution which is there, supposedly, for the salvation of humans. And they said no to Carl. A place that was supposed to symbolise God's forgiveness and love. They turned Carl away because he's just too fucking poisonous. Holy shit. Quite literally. However, Carl was undeterred by all of this, because, you know, he's rarely one to give into things like reality and basic political facts. Because, you see, our boy from Swindon had an ace up his sleeve, because, I don't know if you've heard, but he's kind of a big deal. I'm not, really, discussed... I'm not really interested in discussing any of these comments, because, you see, I've had something like 400 million views on my YouTube channels in total. Um, I've got a huge audience. Uh, you know, now I'm like nearly a million subscribers. And... Not one of you knows, <laughs> but all of the public know because they can go to my YouTube channel, Saga McCad, and just watch for themselves. I've been doing this for five years. I have nearly a million subscribers. <laughs> yeah, Carl clearly felt it was really important to tell people how many YouTube subscribers he has for some fucking reason. And clearly that therefore must have translated into success at the polls, right? Well then, let's take a look at how he and UKIP fared on election day. <laughs> Carl, that's embarrassing, mate. Fucking hell. You put yourself through all of that shit for nothing, you mug. Fucking hell, you claim. You keep lost all of their seats. You destroyed that party. You even lost a cock, for fuck's sake. <laughs> but seriously, Carl. Carl, that's, that's fucking humiliating. You really should be ashamed of that showing, Carl. That is fucking... Piss poor. I mean, really, Carl, that Grim Reaper meme has never been truer, has it? Holy fucking shit. You killed UKIP 
which is absolutely hilarious to me. So, having allowed his massively overinflated ego to get out of hand with this whole running for office thing, do we think that Carl took his electoral humiliation with grace and dignity? No, of course he fucking didn't. He put out a massively delusional video saying that basically the electoral fucking humiliation that UKIP and himself had received at the ballot box was actually a good thing somehow, even though they didn't win a single fucking seat. They got literally wiped out. And the video was even entitled The 20 Year Plan, because he's basically a parody of himself at this point. It's absolutely fucking ludicrous. Uh, to address the crabs in the bucket, what are you so afraid of? What are you so scared of? Are you afraid of losing? Are you afraid of defeat? Because, man, nobody builds anything if they're afraid of defeat. Of course, there are going to be setbacks. But the MEP election was not one of them. You see, he can't even take the owl now. Even after he'd been completely and utterly humiliated, he can't just accept, oh yeah, I fucking lost. Because his ego is so fragile, he's such a fucking pathetic child inside, that he can't accept that he's wrong about anything ever. Even when the numbers are there in black and white on the fucking page telling him he's full of shit. He can't just accept that the catastrophe we all just saw happen, happened. What a dickhead. He also put out a different video claiming that everything went exactly as expected, which is just delusional fucking nonsense. I mean, it really is pathetic arse covering of the most silly kind. Well, I have to say, that went exactly as expected. I know that a lot of people, for some reason, thought that UKIP were going to do all right in this election, and I have to say, I'm sure that I made it clear that we weren't going to. Um, no, Carl. That's a lie. You, in fact, said the exact opposite. How, how is your, what's your prospect for, for winning in your seat? Well, um, honestly, I don't think it's too bad. I mean, if we're going by, like, uh, the previous rounds... In terms of the representing weapons. success, is it, is it getting one MEP or well, we don't five? Know, but we don't know how many we're going to get because polls are very rarely accurate. What would represent success for you? Well, I mean, obviously, MEP elections... So, yeah, you were kind of bigging yourself up before the election, and then on election day, you fell flat on your fucking face. Delicious. Well, I have to say, that went exactly as expected. I know that a lot of people, for some reason, thought that UKIP were going to do all right in this election, and I have to say, I'm sure that I made it clear that we weren't going to. There was no beating Nigel Farage at this point. Right, well, for those who don't know, Nigel Farage is the leader of the Brexit party, which was the party that won the most seats at the European elections. And, of course, he got milkshaked in the process. It was very, very funny. And Carl is trying to say that UKIP did so badly because the Brexit party ran in those elections. Well, there are two points which kind of show that to be bullshit. Firstly, Carl, the Brexit party doing so well doesn't automatically mean that UKIP should have fallen away in quite the way that they did. It is no coincidence, Carl, that UKIP's numbers fell off a fucking cliff as soon as you entered the fray, as soon as you became known widely in the press as the rape tweet guy, and it's still fucking delicious that you are known now as the rape tweet guy. And by the way, a quick shout out to Dr Christy Winters who started that whole thing off with the uh, MythCon, was it 2016 or 2017 thing, when she, you know, pointed out the horrific rapey tweets that Carl had sent. But anyways, yes, it wasn't until Carl, uh, in 2019, uh, you became known widely in the press as the rape tweet guy, that UKIP's numbers just took a massive nosedive. It was really, really embarrassing. I mean, they were running at like 8, 9, 10%, and they ended up polling at 3%, which was exactly where they ended up in the actual election. And secondly, if the Brexit party running in that election is the only reason that UKIP did so badly, then how do you explain UKIP getting fucking wiped out at the local elections only two weeks earlier, in elections where the Brexit party weren't even fucking standing? Yes, that's right, the Brexit party didn't field a single candidate in those local elections, and yet UKIP still managed to lose 80% of their fucking seats. They are now a statistically insignificant political party here in Britain. And that's because the party had moved so far to the right and that you, Carl Benjamin, the rape tweet guy, had become the face of the party to the public. And that is a face that the British public wanted nothing whatsoever to do with. You are so cancerous, Carl, that you turned off UKIP's traditional voter base, who themselves are cancer personified. So you are too cancerous for cancer. Well done, you prick. Anyways, let's wrap this shit up, shall we? Because I'm so fucking done at this point. I really, really am. 
Anyways, um, yeah, I've covered Carl twice in this series now, and I won't be covering him again, unless he goes like fucking full Elliot Rogers or something at some point, um, which would be interesting if that happened, wouldn't it? Because would he also blame Lacey Green for that? Hmm, I don't know. Anyways, there were various things that happened uh, during the campaign, and obviously with the election result and the aftermath and all the rest of it, I just didn't have time to cover um, here in this episode. Um, but I'm sure I covered them along with Christy Winters, um, the general herself, uh, in the Happy Hour show that we do together. And I just want to say a quick thank you to uh, Dr. Winters for being fucking awesome and coming with me on that journey during the uh, during the campaign. We did several shows, um, you know, covering the shenanigans as they cropped up, and it was it was so much fun. Jesus Christ, I had fun making those. Anyways, yeah, uh, to wrap up the actual topic at hand, though, um, I've had a lot of fun with the whole Carl destroyed UKIP thing, but it's only partially true, because it was actually Gerard Batten, the now former leader of UKIP, and I should probably just briefly outline what happened there, because he uh, stood down after the election humiliation, um, said he wouldn't be standing for re-election as leader of the party, then tried to stand for re-election, because, you know, he's so great at keeping his word, uh, but was ultimately blocked from doing so by the executive committee, who basically saw how poisonous he'd been and how completely destructive uh, he'd been for the UKIP, and blocked him from standing, which is fucking hilarious. Anyways, but it's ultimately Gerard Batten's fault for inviting in people like Carl and Tommy Robinson and various other um, extremists, uh, and, you know, uh, pushing the party further and further to the right to the political nowhere land where they basically now reside. Um, and it's ultimately his doing, it's on his watch that UKIP were uh, completely annihilated. So ultimately, it's his fault. Although Carl played his role, there's no doubt about that. Although that role was mainly to be fucking humiliated in every interview he ever did and to become the perpetually milky boy. Milky boy! With all of that said, done, and out of the way, there is just one thing left for me to say. Sargon of a cat. Rape tweet guy. Carl Benjamin. Go fuck yourself. I know you want it. The thing that makes me. What makes the guys go crazy for. They lose their mind. The way I whine. I think it's time. La da 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 It's warming now La da 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 The boys are ready La da 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 It's warming now La da 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 The boys are ready My milkshake brings all the boys to the I see you on it. You want to teach the techniques that free these boys. It can't be bought. Just know that thieves get caught. Watch if you're smart. La da 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 da. It's warming now. La da 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 da. The boys are ready. La da 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 da. It's warming. No!